Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about series and parallel circuits. The basic concepts of voltage, current and resistance aren't too difficult to understand, but the more components you add to a circuit, the more complicated it gets. To solve circuit problems in physics, you have to know how voltage and current vary at different points in a circuit. And the way they vary depends on whether you have a continuous loop with all the components connected in a circle, that's called a series circuit, or if you connect all the components in different branches, that's called a parallel circuit. Or to make things even harder, you can have some mixture of the two. In my last video, I said that current is a continuous flow of charge. You can think of it like water flowing in some pipes, except instead of water, these are electrons. If water in a pipe reaches a junction, it splits up down the two paths. Some flows one way and some flows the other. The way the current splits depends on the resistance of each branch. If the two branches are identical, it'll split evenly. If one has more resistance than the other, then more electrons will flow down the easier path, the one with less resistance. Here, for example, three amps of current flow from the battery. Since one branch has half the resistance of the other branch, it will receive double the current. So two amps will flow down the easier path and one amp will flow down the harder path. And when they reach the junction on the other side, the two separate currents will combine back together to make three amps again. So current isn't a thing that just gets used up. It continues to flow all the way around and back to the battery. So you have the same current going back into the battery as you had leaving in the first place. In a series circuit, therefore, all the components have the same current. There's one continuous path with no splits, so the entire loop has to have the same flow, has to have the same current. But in a parallel circuit, if you add up the currents in each branch, you'll get the total current coming out of the battery. Potential difference, or voltage, works exactly opposite to this. You start out with the full voltage of the battery, and in each path, from wherever it starts, that voltage has to be used up by the time you get back to the battery. It's always used up. So in this case, you start out with 6 volts. So in this series circuit, if these resistors are just as strong as each other, each one will use up 3 of the 6 volts. So we'll start with a potential of 6 volts, in the middle we'll have 3 volts, and once you've gone through both resistors, we'll be down to 0 volts. And everywhere past that resistor will have a potential of 0 volts. So each resistor has a potential difference of 3 volts. Because if you compare each side of the resistor, the difference in potential is 3 volts. 6 minus 3 is 3, and 3 minus 0 is also 3. Now, if instead of being identical, one of those resistors was stronger, one has, say, double the resistance of the other, then they wouldn't use equal amounts of voltage. The one that had the biggest resistance would take up the most voltage. Since resistor 2 has double the resistance, it's going to take up double the voltage. So if we have 6 volts total, resistor 1 will only take 2 volts, and resistor 2 will take 4 volts. It's all proportional to the resistances. So we're still using up the full 6 volts of the battery, it's just that they're not equally spread now. Either way, by the time you get back to the battery, the voltage has to be completely used up. You've got to have zero potential on the other side of the battery. Another way to think about this is if I measure the potential difference over the battery, the difference between one side of the battery and the other has to match the voltage of the battery. So if it's a 6 volt battery, one side has 6 volts, the other side of the battery has 0 volts. That's why it's a 6 volt battery. In a parallel circuit, each path that you take uses up the voltage separately. So each branch of this circuit will receive the full 6 volts of the battery. This entire section of the circuit has a potential of 6 volts, because none of these parts of the wire have reached a resistor yet. But when you do, if there's only one resistor on each path, each one will separately use up the full voltage of the battery. So this entire section of the circuit has a potential of 0 volts. The charges running through these paths are not going to meet any more resistors before getting back to the battery, so the potential difference has to be completely used up by then. Unlike with current, it does not matter whether these resistors are identical or not. Each branch will still get the full voltage of the battery, in this case the full 6 volts. For this reason, bulbs connected in parallel burn brighter, but they also use more power, which means although they're brighter, they'll drain the battery more quickly. In the last video, I also introduced this equation for the resistance in an electrical component. You can use this equation for any component in the circuit, the battery, a resistor, but you can also use it for the circuit as a whole. You can say that the total resistance of a circuit is equal to the total voltage of the circuit, like the voltage of the battery, divided by the total current of the circuit, or the current coming out of the battery. This ability to use circuit equations for an individual component in the circuit and separately use it for the whole circuit as, as one total is a really important element of problem solving with circuits. It gives you the potential to use the same equation multiple times in the same circuit, one time for an individual component to figure out one piece of information you don't know, and then again for the whole circuit to figure out a different piece of information you don't know, or vice versa. It gives you a lot more options for problem solving. 
But if we are going to use this equation for the whole circuit, for the total, then we're going to need a way of figuring out the total resistance of a circuit too. And the way you calculate that depends on what type of circuit it is, whether it's a series or parallel circuit. For a series circuit, you calculate it like this. You just add up the resistances of each component in the circuit. Very simple. For a parallel circuit, the reciprocal of the total resistance of a circuit is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the resistances of each branch. Still fairly simple, but that's a little bit more work. However, sometimes you have to combine those two equations together, like this for example. These two resistors are connected in series, so you can just add them up. That will give you the total resistance of the branch. But then you have to use the reciprocal equation to calculate the total resistance of the circuit as a whole. And then plugging these numbers in, you can solve for the total by taking the reciprocal of both sides. It's kind of like a reciprocal cancels out a reciprocal. So, how do we put this all together? Let's say that in this circuit, we're asked to calculate the current flowing through resistor 2. There are actually a couple of ways we can solve this problem. Some are longer processes than others. Here's the simplest one. We'll at some point need to use the R equals V over I equation to calculate the current flowing through resistor 2. We know that resistor 2 has a resistance of 4 ohms, but we don't know what voltage it's using. The battery is a 10 volt battery, and we know that every branch in the parallel circuit will use up the full voltage of the battery. The second branch will use a full 10 volts. Since resistor 3 has double the resistance of resistor 2, it will use up double the amount of voltage. So resistor 3 will use 6.6666666 etc. volts, and resistor 2 will use 3.3333333 volts. Or in other words, 6 and 2 thirds volts and 3 and a third volts. Now after that little bit of reasoning, we can plug 3 and a third volts into our R equals V over I equation and calculate the current flowing through that resistor. If we solve for the current, we get 0.83 amps. So that's one way of solving it. You can also solve it in a long window way by calculating the total resistance of the circuit, using that and the voltage of the battery to calculate the total current of the circuit, and then using proportional reasoning to figure out how much of that current will flow down each path. That's a little bit more work, but it should come to the same answer. If you can navigate circuits like this using both equations and logical reasoning, there's no limit to the complexity of circuits you can analyze. No matter how complex a circuit, it's all just an extension of these basic principles. But because problem solving is so key to this unit, I've linked a worksheet I created in the video description that has four key types of circuits that you might have to deal with. So I encourage you to give it a go, try some circuits problem solving. If you have any issues, you can always leave a comment below. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button. You can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. But most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning.